I was 28. I was already married. Um, and my father uh, just passed away two months before the riot. Uh, he died right after he, he delivered his last sermon in, in Killeen, Texas in 92 uh, February. So we were just trying to uh, um, go through this grief process as a family. Um, uh, one more thing was my mother, while helping, uh, trying to help my father, uh, he, she ran a bookstore. Uh, in Koreatown called the uh, Christian Book Center. Kidokyo Sirk Center on Western and 11th Street, where used to be a Chinese restaurant in that corner. Um, but 10 years, 10 years she ran a bookstore, and that's where I helped a lot of um, uh, books, and I befriended a lot of church pastors. When the riot happened, um, I had to witness so many things, including our bookstore uh, being uh, looted and uh, a lot of things in our bookstore were stolen and uh, we had to go try to protect our <laughs> whatever was that was left. Our family tried to stay within together and then I would just keep praying that nothing would happen to our bookstore and then when we got to the bookstore the windows were smashed you see a peep the, the bars open people are already inside and they took almost anything that was valuable <coughs> They did leave a lot of Christian books in Korean. Th yeah, it was not valuable to, to people. So we got ourselves a bunch of wooden panels and hammered in front, uh, covering the windows. Uh, we protected the store as much as we can, and we were discussing should we stay and protect the store or go back home. And we said to just go back home and just pray. Right after the riot, actually, um, my wife wanted to keep keep me inside in the apartment. I was living on um, Virgil uh, near First Street, but I told her, you know, I'm a reporter. I got to go out and report. I got to find out what's going on, take pictures, and I have to do my job as a journalist. She stopped me, but I moved out anyway. It was a war zone. It was day even though it was a daytime, um, it was black ash all over. It was dark. Uh, it's hard to see the sun. You smell of uh, some things burning all over the place. I feel like, am I alive? Am I actually looking? Whatever I'm looking at, is this real? Um, I felt like I was in in the middle of one of those apocalyptic movie where there was no law, um, a lot of debris in the middle of the road. Um, furniture and things were burning in the middle of the street, especially in the western. So I couldn't even drive straight. I had to move around those debris as I was taking photos of trees burning, building burning. It was western and six uh, when I stopped my car across the street from northwest corner. All of a sudden, I felt like something was about to happen. So uh, I pulled my car over and I rolled down my window and then that two-story plaza on the, in the northwestern corner just blew up in flame right in front of my eyes I was, as I was shooting my camera away. Boom, 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 boom. It was like a huge explosion. Uh, the two-story was just gone. And I took the photos of that, and that became a cover photo for, of Korean Journal. Like it's just, I was taking photos as it was happening. Um, people in fear running all over the place. I mean, you see different types of people. Those who are victimized, you know, they're crying by the, the stores. Uh, uh, yes, I did see um, a lot of Korean men on top of the roofs with guns and, and trying to protect their stores. On the other hand, on Vermont and Third, um, there used to be thrifty there. And uh, when I went there, I see all these people, just normal people, blacks, Hispanics, they were looting thrifty and carrying things out and running out with it, laughing and smiling. All those items, merchandise. And I'm like, as a reporter, I'm taking pictures of those people stealing things. And when, and the, when the crowd, the mob, saw me taking photos of them, they got angry and they came chasing after me. And I'm like, oh no, I'm like turning around and started running away, grab, hugging my camera. 
and I jump over the small um, uh, wall on, on Bermont Street, scratching my knees, rolling and covering, ducking until the crowd kind of went over me. And then I see some police, the, the National Guards, so I kind of ran behind them. So it, so it was very risky being a journalist. A lot of emotions came about, but then I try to uh, subdue those emotions. I got to do my job. I got to take photos. I got to report. I got to report what's going on. So I try to focus on, on that while being concerned about the safety of my family, uh, my wife, and, and the uh, the family's business, which is the bookstore. A lot of sadness. Uh, I see all um, you know, mom and said pop stores uh, being burned down, and and the the woman in front just sitting down with as if the word ended, just crying. Black people just walking by, laughing. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't sure who to be angry at. Why was this happening? Um, what did we do to come to this point where we are witnessing all this? Tragi tragedy, who is to be blamed? Uh, who do we have to yell at? I wasn't sure who to blame. And the following day um, was when, uh, when I was traveling around Koreatown. Uh, there is a police station, a substation on 8th Street, uh, 8th and Arolo. It's gone now, but uh, there used to be, uh, it's called the uh, Pachurso, or the Koreatown Police Substation. When I was there, uh, there were long lines going around the block of Koreans standing to report the crime, be victimized. And I felt like, oh man, I gotta I got do something. So um, I went in, volunteered to translate uh, and hear so many stories. So I went in there, um, helped them make a police reports. And that's when I befriended several police officers. And they felt so guilty. And, and they were just, just going like this with their head. Um, they were like, TC, can't believe this, is hap this happened. And they were just taking reports. Uh, and at that time, British um, LAPD, at that time, there were 18 police stations in, in LAPD, and the Wilshire area covered about 70% of Koreatown. Uh, and the other 20% were by Rampart. Uh, and the captain of the Wilshire police station was John Mutz. He wished there was something he could do for the community. And he feel, he feel the guilt, he felt the, uh, the sadness. So we had a long talk. Uh, and by the way, the John Mutz, his retired captain, he became one of my best friends later. Um, he invited me to his police station, showed me around the police station. He asked me to help him uh, join his efforts. And the following year, early 1993, uh, LAPD launched uh, the uh, what's called CPAT, Community Police Advisory Board. And I was a founding member of that. It was, it was a significant where police reached out to us saying, uh, we need to change. We need to do something about it. Uh, community, wha what do we have to do? Let's talk. And that's when CPEL was born. Um, and the idea is still around. There is a quasi-government group where community members meet uh, a couple of times, sometimes a couple of times a month. Uh, and they do seminars, workshops, uh, senior lead officer meetings, summits, uh, trying to bridge the gap between the community and, and the police still exists. And it spread to all LAPD stations afterward. Several changes that I noticed after the riot, one is change in the, in the police towards solving problem t problems together with the community and change in the victim advocacy field. Uh, I mean, starting out very first in the United States history, very first uh, victims program targeting minority community it was our Korean program. Mm -hmm. And also there was a change in attitude from journalists. Um, a lot of reporters uh, among my colleagues and friends, we felt like very responsible. We need to report more. Mm -hmm. 
we need to do what we can for to be eyes and ears so, so that th our rights as a citizen should be up upheld. And there was a huge movement politically wise. Um, there was there was a re uh, the Korean American Democratic Committee KDC restarted uh, a few months after the riot, and I reported that we did a launching ceremony together in front of LA City Hall on the steps, and there was a change in people's mindset, attitude, conscious. Um, I'm not sure who started, but a few days after after the the riot, if you recall about the peace march, and and people started getting getting together, uh, keep talking about, you know, peace. We, we need to uh, have an attitude. We're not trying to retaliate back to all those people who harmed us, but we need to spread the, 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 the word peace among others. Uh, so the people started gathering together. I, I was taking a lot of pictures of that as well. And there was huge peace, peace march. Uh, I think in Korean American history, that's probably the largest gathering uh, more than uh, uh, the Purgunama, the soccer game thing. Uh, that, was, that was huge. I have never seen so many Koreans gather. Um, some people say 100,000. I don't think it was that, that many, but there were so many at the MacArthur Park at that time. And they marched, they, they circled around the Koreatown, uh, led by National Guard. I, w I jumped on top of National Guard Jeep, taking photos of the people uh, marching. It was beautiful. People were chanting, non-Koreans joined in. It was a sight, it was very beautiful. Uh, um, and that finally something came out of these ashes and, and the, the sentiment uh, that we need to, we are one, we, are, we need to work together, resolve problems peacefully, it was spreading. And it was beautiful to watch that. I still have a lot of work, more, you know, a lot of ways to go. A lot of dialogues has started afterward. Even within the city attorney's office, um, the days of dialogue began. Uh, the uh, mediation program began. Um, uh, the days of dialogue uh, was very significant because it, it put a lot of different representatives from different groups, different ethnic groups, come together and discuss. Saigu Center began. Um, the API dispute resolution. Uh, several nonprofits began afterward trying to mediate, trying to solve problems. I believe it has gotten better. Of course, problems still exist, still going. Of course, crimes still happen. Still, there are victims out there, um, and uh, we still have a lot of work cut out for us. But it has been improving. I think it was a huge turning point. I mean. If I to a point where I can say Korean American history is divided like before the riot and after the riot, <laughs> where the attitude changed. We gotta get more involved in the politics. We gotta have our kids volunteer more time. We have to help people, those in need, not just our own community, but we gotta talk to the people in other ethnic groups. We gotta open up our communication. We have to do something more for this America that, that we live in and try to get citizenship. We gotta know what's, what's going on in, in American politics, not just Korean politics. We have to read newspaper. We have to know what's going on. Attitude changed after the riot. My name is T.C. Kim, and this is my Saigu story. Mm -hmm.